Adrian. I'm kind of curious how students like, like, do they um, give you guys any feedback as you're doing this, these activities on paper versus an ally? Have you gotten any feedback by like, being oh. elected? And how do you get feedback, formative feedback for your course? Multiple ways. Um, Mid semester, there's already been a check that went out, uh, feedback to the TAs. They did it paper and pencil and lab. We do the standard, whatever the evaluation form is from the department. I'm not a fan of that particularly because it now goes out electronically. Some do and don't. The other one I use is the sound of the student assessment of their learning gains. I've customized a version for the course, and that's a self report on how does this aspect of what we did help you learn better? And we do that one in class electronically, so I get everybody's vote. The thing that was of interest to me was, why do I continue these in-class paper quizzes? Students, year after year, have said it really helps me learn. That's the bottom line why I've continued it. And if they ask me, why are you doing this? I say, it's because previous generations said this. At the end, I'm going to ask you, you see what you want me to do the next year. But they have they've given this a thumbs up, and I don't think there's too many complaints about it. And from our end, it helps <coughs> keep us in touch with our students and how they're doing and kind of track them week to week. Yeah. Uh, and, and each time we enter quiz grades, we look how the students are trending. Is this kind of an oddball? Have they gotten 25 out of 25s on the last four? Yeah, this one's at 11. That's worth a message of how's it going this week? I noticed some things up. Let me know. Do, yeah. Do the quizzes get turned back to them? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that they can. Yeah. Usually within a day. So they'll see their grade go up on Canvas, and then a few days later, maybe the next week, we'll physically give them the their quiz back, and and then as I think, well, if I went to the calendar, we we also post the answer keys to the quizzes after they've all been graded and uploaded on Canvas, so the students can can look at their quiz, see what they got wrong. Um, and then check the answer key to see where their answer diverged from. Where do you post the answer keys? Uh, it's well, in the calendar. If you're a, so if you're a student and you want to go check the answer key, you would just click on the calendar, and then once it pops up. So they took a quiz on Tuesday, 7 AB. If they were to click on that, then this box pops up and Here's the sample quiz questions that they could have used to study for the quiz. So that's available to them before the quiz. After the quiz has been graded, we post the answer key. And so they can click on that. They can download it if they want um, and have that as part of their records. Can well. you pop up the preview? Does the answer yeah. key include just the answers, or does it, does it basically include the whole test? I think this is bigger, because I realize that it's small enough here on the. Oh, just, so it is actually a picture of the of the exam itself with the answers in it. Mm -hmm. So they it's yeah, I know this is probably difficult to see, but it's the it's the quiz itself that they took and then the answers are highlighted for them in yellow. Got it. Yep. And then often we'll add more comments of the the yellow is what you had to answer to get the question correct and then often we'll add the blue some, is some more extra. Stuff. Yeah. Could you show how you set that up? So you're creating an assignment on the assignments tab mm -hmm. and then adding those files under the details or yeah uh, let's see let's go back into and while Tim's driving that Tom is oh what was my question <laughs> oh are all 20 questions answered or just the five that we graded on the just answer? just the five that we graded okay yeah so the we're Same really careful are, not that way they can't get off to the next year that's yeah. right yeah. Okay. And the sample quiz questions that aren't asked on the quizzes are write exam writing material. Aha. Uh -huh. And we are very well, we clear. We don't want to just feed them all the answers, but right. we do want to give them feedback on the ones they answer. Yeah. So while the students are studying, uh, they'll often send us TAs the document of the sample quiz questions with their answers. Can you check this over? Question number 12, I'm not really sure on. Uh, and that works out really nicely for answering students' questions. Every I do the editing usually right from the calendar. I don't go somewhere else. Yeah, actually the calendar is really convenient for this. So this is one of the things that sold me on Canvas. Yeah. So back to this quiz seven A B. Um, you edit. You yeah, if you edit it and then more options here, it'll pop up a big screen. And then in this text box, 
you can literally just drop files in that you've uploaded from Canvas. Right? So there's a yeah, there's a list of files over here, and Kathy's nicely um, got them all in different separate folders and everything. So I'm going to scroll down to let's say 2017 lecture slides, and here's the lecture from one of the first weeks of the course. If you click on that, it's going to drop it right into here, and it it just makes it a direct link to that file, which is pretty cool. And we've conveniently grayed this out, the, file, the files tab. So if you were to go into student view, which is hidden, you have to go into settings and then student view, I don't know why, but then you can see what a student sees, and they don't see files, because otherwise they would see all, the all of our answer. <laughs> yeah, they see all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so we were very picky about what the students have access to. So that's all right there in the course, and you're just choosing year by year which things. Yeah, and we have 2016, 2014 files in there yeah. too. So well, I was just going to say, we do things similar, OK? But we have way too much stuff for the calendar. It would be way too complicated. I have another calendar. But, so we use modules instead. Mm -hmm. and under modules, then you can produce a list of them and you can put time release stuff on it so they can't even see it until it's time released to whatever the date is you want to release that. Yeah. And so they I don't even know it's there until it gets released to them. Yeah. And you can pre prep that at the yep. beginning of the semester yeah. of March 15th. Yep. That'll hold it down. Yeah. You know, it's pretty right. slick. I mean, that's just a different way to do it. It achieves exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. There's also in the last few months, if you do click the files, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then click on the cloud icon for one of the individual files. This one here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is fairly new. There's the restricted access uh -huh. yeah. button, and you can set um, dates. Uh, schedule, schedule student, student availability. availability. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So if you wanted to set it up so you don't have to be constantly clicking publish or unpublish. That's very cool. Every semester. Yeah. 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 So then the students could have access to the file tab, mm -hmm. but just what we allow them. And I think that just appeared in the last couple of months, so okay. it's easy to miss. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, I love Canvas. Canvas is great. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. didn't look back. No. We left D2L and didn't look back. Yeah. Along with the publish, unpublish, one thing that we haven't been able to figure out is once on an, on an assignment, once you put the rubric in, if the assignment's published, students will be able to see that rubric. So we keep future assignments unpublished because they're populated with, with rubrics already. Uh, and we haven't figured out how to keep those rubrics secret, but still have the students be able to see the assignment. Oh, I was gonna say, I know that you could tell them like to release, you can release the assignment on a certain day. Mm -hmm. So they, I mean, it's the same as unpublished. Like yeah. when it's unpublished, they don't see it either. Mm -hmm. So you could say available March 15th at midnight or whatever day you want it to open to them. Will the student be able to like see that in the grade book or see that it's coming later? I think the rubric might still be available. Yeah, and no, I think your rubric is available on the thing. Yeah. Because that's a little bit separate thing how it comes in. So once the assignment came up that they could see it, they could see the rubric it would be there because it shows up on the bottom of that. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. But you not show the assignment until after they've handed it in, right? So what's yep. the difference? You could just make it available. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, schedule. One, the, yeah, schedule the it to be yeah. available after you're yeah. planning to have it right there, yeah. publishing it after it. Yeah. After yeah. It, and that's yeah. more locked down because then they don't even see that that assignment is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I kind of don't like because I like for the whole gradebook to be populated with all of their assignments and, and then to be able to see in the future when things are due. And, and mm -hmm. So I think if you restrict the dates, it still shows up in the gradebook. Okay. But yeah. they just yeah. can't yeah. click on it and see the details, uh -huh, which okay. is probably what you guys want. Yeah, right? that sounds like the right solution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, that's neat. Yeah. If you added the rubric after they needed to be able to see, like right before you started yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done that, but the rubrics are kind of annoying. Yeah. 
Well, one thing, <laughs> one thing that I noticed too about rubrics, because I think this is the second year we've been, last year I know we built in rubrics for all the labs, and so when we switched from the trial version of Canvas over to the Canvas proper, um, what I noticed is that it automatically populated this year's version of labs with the rubrics that we had created last year. However, we switched the order of the labs that we did this year, just from a the logistical switch. standpoint. Spring break. Yeah, and so what I've noticed is um, the we switched the order of labs, but Canvas kept the order of rubrics. So the rubrics are incorrect. Once we diverged from last year's course, each rubric was a, a week off. So we've had to, at least at, on one or two occasions, we've had to go in and like manually update the rubric and change it, which is, I mean, it's, it takes 10 minutes, but it's just kind of annoying. Did you call Canvas? No, I haven't. Call the Canvas helpline, get Canvas in Salt Lake City, and get them, they will look directly at your course, mm -hmm. and they will tell you if there's a fix for this, um, fix it rather than having to do it okay. manually. But they're really good about helping you. Yeah. Because they're very they responsive. Active. Even even the chat system in the Canvas um, yeah. help is, is very quick. I just eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I've heard it talk a lot. But yeah. You know, that's just me. But anyway, they're really good about helping you because they pull up your course and they'll look directly at it with you and say, now what's the problem and all this stuff and everything. And, um, they'll, they'll help you solve the problem because most of the time they've had the same question within the last couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. One of the interesting things that I've um, just this morning that I've been noticing about this is this is not what I expected when we were putting together the grading sheet. Um, in many ways, this is about a hybrid class that's partly paper and pencil and partly canvas. And how do we make these two things um, play together? So the gradebook schemes might not be super um, applicable to what we've been talking about today. However, we've got some good information here um, that you could look through. And if you came expecting um, something about gradebook schemes, um, take a look at this, see if these answer any of your questions, and then ask us some questions. So let's take just five minutes to like look through this and, and get familiar with that and give these guys a break and a chance to get more coffee. Um, and they can come around and if you have a specific question for them, go ahead and grab them. But let's just, you know, take five minutes to sort of reflect and, and such right now. All right, are there, are there any other questions that, that you thought of or hints, things like, oh, by the way, there's this new thing that's available that was super awesome. So, Kathy and Tim, why are you guys using um, email instead of like the Canvas messages or Canvas emails? Or that's a really good question. I think it's probably a bit of institutional inertia. Um, this is, I think, our third semester using Canvas, and I'm just so used to using Classless with, you know, by the WISP. Yeah, exactly. And I think for the students, too, they're used to that kind of communication as well. So um, haven't really explored the Canvas messaging system all that much. Although, I have used it. The nice thing about Canvas is if there's an assignment that students have been late to upload something, it is nice that you can just click a button that says message everyone who has not yet uploaded this assignment and right. they can say, hey, we need this assignment from you, upload it ASAP. So yeah. I've used that before. Yeah. So and the Canvas inbox does send it to their whatever email is yeah. posted for Canvas. Right. I believe Canvas. so. Mm -hmm. No, because we use And you can time. reply there too. Yeah. So you can reply in either place, either in Canvas or in your regular yeah, because it'll come to the regular email. Mm -hmm. so. And I don't, so, I also don't know how much the students make use of 
Canvas. Uh, as we're, I don't know that they use it to the extent that we w want them to. So for example, when we put things up like answer keys to quizzes um, or feedback from labs, I don't know that they check it all that often. Does anyone know if there's a way to check out the analytics? You can see how many times you can see. Cancel that. Let's go in the analytics. Stuff. Yeah. We can see how often they're going in and how much time they're spending, but I don't know if we can, you can, see, you can see what see files it. they're accessing. Oh, yeah. You can see every single page they access. You can see if they submit an assignment, like a final project or paper. You can see the last time they went in and viewed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't guarantee that they looked at their feedback, <laughs> obviously. Right. But it will tell you the date and we'll keep updating that date. So I had a faculty curious and the student went in and looked at it after they handed it in but before she gave them feedback you know she's like why do you give feedback till Tuesday they looked at it on Monday so but then we tested this when you, every time you go back in and view it that date updates to the oh, last time you viewed it this is one of the lovely things about learning management systems if they exploit it or let us do it is being able to get some of that formative feedback on, I'm putting all this effort into creating these answer keys, do they actually use them? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying to pull up here. <coughs> Can I ask you guys a general question, because I sit on this other committee for campus on data. What do you think about all this data? Who do you think it belongs to? <laughs> they don't like the word ownership, but who do you think it belongs to? I don't know, I've never given that thought. And that came up on there. Apparently, it belongs to campus. It doesn't belong to you, and it doesn't belong to the students. It belongs okay. to the university? Yes. And so this was a thing that I didn't realize until I was on this thing. I thought it belonged to the students and the faculty who was running the course, and whether they wanted to release it or not, they could, but you don't have that choice. Hmm. Well, I know that D part of the reason that we're going to Canvas versus D2L is because D2L would, they own the data. That's right. And we could buy it back from them. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, just keep aware, all the stuff we're talking about, yeah. yes, it runs it off, but it's also available to the university in general to do, and potentially UW system as well, hmm. to um, do whatever they want with. Then does that mean that it's owned by the state and other people have access no, to it? No, no. You still have all the same... Is it HIPAA or whatever they're required? HIPAA is the one per student. There's still all those same requirements. You can't release names. You can't public. You can't look at or publish documents that a student has written or anything. It's the analytics of all this other stuff that we're talking about. I just read an article. There's a bill I think in Congress that will allow ISPs, the internet service providers, to sell the websites that you go to, like all of your traffic. So anyway, it's 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 you don't really have anything to say about this, but I'm just saying that you know it's interesting. You can get all this information, but keep in mind that other people get this information. But then, couldn't it be that those analytics could be a way to evaluate instructors as opposed to filling out timesheets? Exactly. Whether that's good or bad, that's probably where it's going. Oh, this is a good topic. <laughs> so I just, right. I'm sorry for bringing that up. That's for like, next semester, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't know what but to do. Right. Like, now that we there's a rabbit hole. There was an interesting thing when you were doing your group. Yeah. 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 Because this is one we will get back to student that even, by the way. Yeah. But easy to identify like a problem student. We were trying to answer the question how many people looked at the answer key after it was posted. We're having no trouble going student by student. And seeing that this one looked at the reading for lecture, this one did that reading for lecture. Uh, they've gone in there and got the sample quiz questions. But we'd like to pull up the document and see who got it, as opposed to a student, how many things the student got. So maybe we all should call St. Louis or Salt Lake City. Where are they? They're in Salt Lake City. They, Salt Lake. they may or may, you can always request that they do things for you. And they have a thing where they vote on this periodically of things that they should add. But it may already exist. So if you call Good them, point. the best thing is to call them and ask them, can you do this? Because before you go into 
spending hours because yeah. they could spend a lot of time looking for stuff. Mm -hmm. Just call them and ask them first. Great suggestion. Thank you. I kind of another question. Yeah, right. come on. John, yeah, you were going to ask yeah. him about. So I was going to make a, a comment on your rubrics. Um, so I played a lot with learning mastery stuff, and you could think of adding some questions to your rubrics that get at your overall learning mastery in your course and in your department, whatever. Okay, and they could be added to. They don't necessarily go into the grade, but you can say that they either did this. So one of mine is. Communicate oral communication. Okay, they're either exemplary, you're okay, or they're deficient. Essentially, they have those three things that show up on there. But it doesn't go into the grade, but it goes into the learning mastery grade book. And then, if you have these across all of these rubrics in here, you can assess different things. So maybe one time you have something on writing in there. I don't know. I'm just saying, for example. Um, so that might be one of your learning mastery things that you're looking at across the course. That can then be easily populated into the department, um, what do you call it, where you evaluate your... Accreditation? Yeah, the accreditation stuff that you need to submit and your documentation. It can be automatically done for the whole department, for your course, whatever. And then it saves you a lot of work doing that. But you have to make those up first, and then you have to add them to your rubric as a separate item. Mm -hmm. Would that be advantageous to do each rubric for each laboratory exercise, or kind of pick so out So what you do ones? is you create these learning mastery things separately, okay? okay? And then you could add them into your rubric. Okay. So you know you can go back and edit this particular rubric, yeah. you know? And when you edit it, you have a choice of adding these other things in. But they don't necessarily count. They don't have to count towards the final grade. Mm -hmm. But they get used when you're looking at these other things. Then you can let the students see it or not see it. You know, that's up to you guys. I believe that can be turned on in settings under more options. I believe the learning mastery or the mastery path. Yeah, that's where it turns on. But it's a, it's a, you know it's a thing to think about if you need to do some of this stuff for accreditation sort of yeah. things. Yeah. Or five year review. Yeah, right. and you know, it becomes, because essentially these learning mastery things can be for, or um, the individual line things you're putting in there, it can be at the course level, the department level, the college level, and the university level. And the university, in theory, you could put all of those in there, and the university could, bam, at the end of the semester, get the data that they wanted on certain things. Now, you're, it's up to you to put in what you think your students do. So it doesn't automatically evaluate it, but it, it's something that would fit pretty easy on this stuff. All right. One more question, Sarah. I just want to add one caveat about the analytics page with the page views. Um, just I'm seeing that the mobile app does not accurately report page views to mm -hmm. analytics. So if you have students who are using the mobile app to access their course, it might not look like they're doing as much. Oh, that's a so, good one. Yeah. Maybe don't trust that as much. Hmm. Yeah. I had a lot of problems with the mobile app. I do too. Yeah. I was going to ask if people too. use the mobile app because I have, I've had it downloaded on my phone for a year and a half now and I never use it because I think it's garbage. Which mobile um, app do you use? The SpeedGrader mobile app or do you use the whatever yeah, the Canvas the Canvas version of the different mobile apps on Canvas? There are three. <laughs> See, that's what's so that's weird. That's the first problem. Well, as great well, as the one is just the Canvas app that the students can access. One is a SpeedGrader that helps you do this, and it would probably be actually be really good for you guys because you're doing paper stuff and then you can just. Yeah. Do whatever on, on, on your mobile device. Yeah. And then the third one is campus polls, which apparently were terrible. Why, as, as great as this web based uh, one is, I, it seems like they don't have their apps together. <laughs> Not yet. But still young and learning. Yeah. Um, please help me thank um, these three for coming in today and, and sharing their story.